Let's talk about rectovaginal fistulas. These fistulas are so pesty. They are by far the most annoying of all anal fistulas to treat and manage both for patients as well as providers. And I'm gonna go ahead and explain why these are so difficult uh, to treat and take care of. So why might somebody get a fistula from their rectum into the vagina? One common condition or reason for this, even though this is not that common actually, is a tear during vaginal delivery. So sometimes what can happen as your OBGYN is trying to get your baby out, you can actually tear through and through from your vagina into the rectum. And when they go to repair this, sometimes there could be either a little breakdown in the repair or an infection that could result in a false passageway from your rectum to the vagina. The symptom of this is feeling of either air or stool passing through your vagina um, in the postpartum setting. Postpartum is not the only reason for developing a rectovaginal fistulas. Some of these can be from a cryptoglandular process, meaning a gland inside the anus that gets infected and travels out to the rectum. The other condition could be Crohn's disease causing a burrowing infection from the rectum into the vagina causing all of these symptoms. So the way we manage and treat these always is to allow any infection to first cool off. Second, we do an exam under anesthesia where we're gonna look in here and try and identify the anatomy of the fistula. Some of these fistulas can actually be uh, misclassified as rectovaginal where they're in fact anovaginal. And anovaginal fistulas are actually a lot easier to take care of because an anovaginal fistula actually travels through the anal sphincter complex before making its way into the rectum. So there's some tissue between the anus and the vagina that allows us to get a better repair of a fistula. On the other hand, a true rectovaginal fistula arises higher up in the rectum where it has very thin tissue between the vagina and the rectum. And these can be challenging to uh, take care of because there isn't a lot of tissue or space and usually a very thin septum to work with. So in general, if we have an anovaginal fistula, sometimes we'll place a seton to cool it off the same way we would do for a cryptoglandular fistula. And then oftentimes, a lot of the repair options that we have for anovaginal fistulas, such as, for example, a lift procedure where we go between the muscles to repair the fistula could be an option. For women that have a true rectovaginal fistula, where there's actually very minimal tissue between the two structures, one of my favorite ways to treat this is with a rectal advancement flap. Sometimes you can also do a vaginal advancement flap to help repair the, uh, the defect and then use native rectal tissue in order to close these. If these are high, we can use a special Tamis technique where we use laparoscopic surgery through the rectum in order to repair these. However, for some individuals, they've had multiple repairs and it's not uncommon for these repairs to not hold. And if those don't hold, we unfortunately often have to go to other options that include a Martius flap or using bulbocavernosis labial fat in order to bolster and repair this, or sometimes doing a diverting ileostomy followed by a gracilis muscle flap, taking muscle from their leg, flapping it around into the space in order to create space between the two tissues and allow healing. These can be very challenging to treat. They need expert techniques and expertise in doing these frequently in order to heal well. So hopefully I have opened a opportunity for any questions for anybody that may stumble across this that is dealing with this awful condition.